Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. Patrick Claiborne, once he settled in Arkansas, looked at the political landscape and decided initially to support the Whig party, likely translating his family's ties to the Whigs in Ireland and the British political system into Arkansas. But that allegiance did not last long and eventually he supported, for example, the fire-eating Democrat Thomas Hinman. While he was initially too poor, to purchase a plantation and didn't see it as a good investment. He eventually did own property worth 20,000 US dollars of the time. As we get towards the election of President Lincoln and then the secession of South Carolina, revolution grips the South. Arkansas is not among the early states to rebel and Claiborne is conscientious of this. But he also realizes that once war starts and the bloodshed begins, civil war is likely to follow. And, as he said, the fever of revolution is a very contagious one. He wanted to fight tyrannical majorities, as he perceived of the North, and he didn't want to be enslaved by Northern oppressors. He was a military man and fought in the early campaigns at Shiloh and Perrywell. Eventually he was with Braxton Bragg in the Battle of Chattanooga and Chickamauga and he fought alongside General Hood outside of Atlanta. Unfortunately his career got cut short in November of 1864 when he died in the Battle of Franklin. By that point however his career had stagnated for months and he had gained a significant level of infamy due to a proposal he had made in January of 1864 regarding the arming of slaves for the Confederate war effort. He understood that the United States used slaves against the South and that the South needed more fighters and that the only way to obtain those fighters was to use slaves to avoid subjugation by the northern states. As he said in his proposal, quoting, Slavery is comparatively valueless to us for labor, but of increasing worth to the enemy. He put it mildly, probably, when he made the claim that it was a question that southerners faced 
that simply boil down to giving up the Negro slave rather than being a slave on their own. He even pointed to historic examples where slave societies had fallen for their insistence on maintaining slavery. He even insisted on historic examples where societies had freed their slaves to fight in their war to gain their independence. But here, in January of 1864, the rebels weren't ready yet to hear Claiborne's argument and take it into serious consideration. It is speculative. But it's likely that Claiborne's career stagnated exactly because of this proposal. Of course, it's an ironic twist that in the very last months of the rebellion, they actually take up Claiborne's proposal because they are so desperate. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.